Hello! This video is about a blog called Ayanome. Uh, it's not a blog I wrote. This blog is by Ayame, who is the keyboardist of the Japanese Visual K uh, metal band uh, Machinro Opera. Now, um, I used to translate this blog sometimes. Um, he used to post a blog maybe once or twice a month. Uh, I'm not fluent in Japanese, so it would take me a few hours to do a blog, even when I was really going fast at it. Um, but a couple of blogs a month was pretty manageable. Uh, but now, um, about a year ago, he started blogging twice a day. And we're not talking like a sentence or two, we're talking like several, like a three section with three or four paragraphs per section, intelligent, well-researched, um, informative blogs on all kinds of subjects. Um, I don't know how he has time to do it, but it's pretty amazing. Um, so I'm kind of stuck in a place where I see somebody doing even more work that needs even should be getting even more recognition, but I don't have time to keep up with it at that level. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm hoping that this video will, um, that doing video reactions to some of the blogs will be a good way to support it. And to let more people know about the great stuff that Ayame is writing about. So, why is he blogging so much? Well, we recently found out that he's been on a quest to be the Bandoman who wrote a hundred thousand characters. Um, he's written like 600 blogs, and in the end of September here in 2018, he's going to be giving a talk about, um, about this Herculean effort of blogging that he has done. So, um... It makes me wonder, why is he writing so many blogs? Um, I mean, he's composing music, he's playing, he's performing, recording, I, eating ramen. When does he have time to write all this stuff? Um, and why? Uh, well, I guess he's got a lot to say. He's actually um, given classes at universities sometimes as well as a visiting professor. Um, so he likes to teach people, um, he likes to research subjects and be informed about all kinds of things, um, technology, music, all this stuff. Um, one thing I think he's kind of out to prove that Visual K musicians are not just a bunch of edgy air-headed boy toys like a lot of people might accuse them to be. Um, they're actually dedicated, hard-working, intelligent people in Visual K. They're, they're there. They're impressive. Um, talented people. Um, what else, um, may he be trying to do here? Um, well, like with his teaching as a professor, um, I think he really wants to inspire fans to learn more. Um, it's awesome to go to concerts, and I think he also wants them to know that it's awesome to read news articles or open up a book or go to school and study something new. Um, and he also, so how does he inspire me? Um, well, I think he's really helped me to love the future. To um, I kind of used to think that the future seemed cold and uninviting, like, Getting, just we were getting further away from nature. Um, but Matamoro Opera and Ayame kind of got me thinking that innovation is human nature. Um, mirai, which is the Japanese word for future, um, just sounds warm and bright. And I think I have that feeling about it because I learned that word uh, listening to their music. And um, when I read his blog, he um, 
I love that he analyzes things objectively. He understands a really diverse viewpoints. He, he, he likes to examine that people have different things that they want, and that's okay. Um, but he also exposes any kind of fault or dangers in things, like um, the possibility for hacking systems, even though the system would make life easier. How are we going to make it secure? Um, and, but he always concludes with, with hope, with uh, some kind of, a kind of grounded faith in humanity. Um, so I really love that about his blog. And, um, you know, the future is where we're all going. And he makes me feel excited about that. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, uh, I think that making videos could be a good way to support his blog. Um, what got me thinking about video about videos for his blog uh, first was a couple weeks ago he posted a blog about um, about learning English. Um, he was talking about how he's been learning, how he has tried to learn English and that one of the hardest things in his opinion is listening skills. And I think um, most language learners would agree. Um, definitely for me, um, I can formulate a sentence in my brain from the words, kind of the collection of words that I already have at hand and I can put it together and and deliver it in a foreign language. But then when it's time to listen and process what the person is saying to me, that becomes very difficult. And um, I find myself getting lost even when someone's saying something simple sometimes. Um, I think part of that is... Um, not knowing what words to expect the person to say, and um, maybe they're saying words that I don't know yet. But another part of that is uh, just nervousness, just um, all the uh, excitement of interacting with another person, talking with another person, um, can be a little overwhelming when it comes to trying to process words from another language, in my opinion. Even um, my listening skills aren't great watching a video, but sometimes that can be easier than listening to someone in person. Um, but all this, all that stuff just takes a lot, of, like, takes practice. So I got to thinking that I, like, wanted to help by replying rather than trying to write a reply in Japanese, or trying to write a reply in English, I thought, to help with listening skills, I should, um, I would like to record a reply video. So I did a really small one on YouTube, or on um, Twitter. And I got to thinking that making uh, video replies to some of my army's blogs would be a good way for people who are familiar with the blog to practice their English listening skills. Because you've already got a subject that you're familiar with, and if you've read the blog or if you wrote the blog, um, you've got a subject you're familiar with. So that gives you a little bit more some way to expect what I'm going to be saying. Um, and predictability and context are so important with, um, uh, with interpreting language, with understanding what your, what's coming in. So, um, another reason is um, I am a blog about YouTube recently, um, which I will talk about very soon. Um, and um, I even ran across one of my covers on YouTube, and I'm just still completely freaking out. Ah! But I'm so 
very grateful and honored. Um, ah, so, anyway, let's, um, I will probably talk about it, blog about that another time. Um, but I also saw that Yolando Boss uh, was talking about YouTube, and um, Yolando no Boss was talking about YouTube as well. Um, so it got me thinking that a lot of people watch YouTube, and that may be a good way to, um, not just to help people who are learning, uh, to help people who are learning English, um, but also a good way to get overseas fans excited about Ayame's blog, uh, which is something that I don't, unfortunately haven't had time to do um, in writing, but maybe I can do on video. So, let's visit Ayame's blog. Let's see. I, even though Ayame has inspired in me a new love for technology, um, I still am not that technically savvy, so I, I hope as I do more vlogs, we will you will see improvements, but right now I have Ayami's blog on my cell phone because I don't know how to put the screen the screen on my screen. So anyway, I'm here on Ayami's blog. I am looking at his blog about YouTube and Line about social networking services. So, um, by the way, I am, let's see here, I'll put it in here. This little button at the bottom here, I hit English, and the wonders of technology and the internet put this into English for me. Now, yes, that means I am not translating this right now. I'm not that fluent in Japanese yet. I'd like to get there someday. Um, but it's just not where I'm at yet. Um, and that is okay. Um, just reading it with automatic translate, you can... Oops, can't see anything. Here we go. Um, you can pretty much get the idea. And you know when it's saying something completely off the wall and crazy, that's probably not what he was saying. It probably got translated wrong. And other than that, um, usually if I find something that really isn't making sense or I really find um, a particular few sentences that I, would, that I would really like to understand exactly what he said um, because they really inspired me or something, um, or gave me the feels, you know, um, then I will take those and use the, and, um, and I will, like, carefully dissect them and make sure and, you know, copy-paste the kanji into dictionaries, any, you know, any words that I don't know, and use the words that I do know and figure it out exactly what it says. Um, again, when, when I was translating these, I would do that with every sentence, with every word, um, but humans have other things to do, and the computer can do it mostly. Um, and Ayame actually touched on this subject in his blog because he has a question section. Um, which can really see it here. Um, if you go to his blog and look under the menu, you can find a section for questions, and you can ask Ayame a question. This is a really cool feature about his blog. Um, you can ask him something, and um, if he has time, and um, and if he can answer it, he will answer your question in his blog. So he, um, I had asked him a question about trans about translating technology, and um, he also said that using Google Translate is um, can be really useful, um, although the human element is always important to um, kind of make sure that it's correct. Uh, so that's basically what I try to do with this. 
um, again, of course, with song lyrics or something um, more specific like that, I would do a real serious translation of it. But with these, um, we're just summarizing here and discussing. So you can read Ayami's blog too, like this. You don't have to get a, trans a real translation of it. Because um, there's just nobody who has time to translate 600 blogs. <laughs> So, but we want to read them. We want to know what they say. Um, so, I got a little sidetrack there. I'm sorry. Um, so, yes, we have to watch out that our in online tower of Babel doesn't get knocked down. But here we are, climbing it and getting in touch with each other around the world. So, here is the blog. And he's talking about social networking services, and which ones are the most um, are the most popular in Japan, and what does he think? What or what do we think will become a popular in the future? So, now he's linked to an article here, and we'll go check that out. This article has lots of graphs. Let's see. There we go. This can also be auto translated. And the obvious things like Facebook and um, YouTube are still going to show up correctly here. So, what we see here is Line is the biggest one. And a lot of you. Um, if you're not fam super familiar with um, Japanese social media, you're probably going to be saying, what on earth is Line? And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. I know I had no idea what it was until I read about it in Ayami's blog. So, here's Facebook and Twitter, somewhere around uh, 31%. We've got some other ones here, Google+, Plus down at 23%. We've got YouTube up here at 72%. That's very close to Line, which was at 75%. So YouTube and Line are both very high. And we got Nico Nico, which is another video service, is kind of kind of low now. Snapchat is like almost nothing. Sorry, Snapchat people. And Instagram is at 25%, but I've heard it is growing quite a bit. So. We can look at Ayame's blog some more here. He talked about what people are doing with Line and YouTube. And I actually went ahead and looked at some other articles too to do a little more research on this. So, um, let me get into some of those things real quick. Um, what on earth is Line? Um, so Line is kind of like instant messenger. Um, which makes me kind of question, like, if it should even be included in this comparison because it's kind of apples to oranges. Um, Line and instant messenger and those kind of things are direct social networking. And uh, things like Twitter and Facebook are group social networking. Direct social networking is where is something where mostly you're just sending a message from you to one or two other people. It's like a chat. Um, and whereas group social networking is where you're posting something for anybody or for all your friends or all your followers to see. You're posting it to a general audience. Um, so these are very different things. Of course, they have each one has the features of the other. Um, Facebook and Twitter um, have a personal message or a direct message feature now. Um, thank goodness. And um, because I think I wasn't even going to do Twitter if I, until they added that. Um, and Line also has some kind of a um, timeline feature as well. So, um, so why is Facebook not, what is going on with Facebook in Japan? Um, a lot of you 
or, um, I think a lot of people who are music fans and stuff will notice that we're not seeing as much Facebook, um, as much of our Japanese musicians or even Japanese fan friends and things on Facebook as we see them on Twitter or Instagram. Um, and I have been wondering why Facebook doesn't seem to be as active um, in Japan. Uh, so one article I read said that because Facebook, especially at first, um, said that they needed your real name and a picture, um, that was kind of interpreted as being a more professional site uh, in Japan, where you know whatever you put there is going to reflect on you um, because it's attached to your name and your photo. Um, and that could, you know, so people will use that more for their professional side. Um, now, I, although I've read that in an article, uh, my Japanese friends that I have who are on Facebook usually are posting kind of family stuff on there and, or friend type of stuff on there. Um, but it is usually a little more polished. Um, so, anyway, as for me, um, I, I tend, you know, I'm from the United States. Um, me personally, I like to put um, mostly like family photos and things like that on Facebook or use it to access groups um, that I want to interact with. Um, or, or pages that I need to get information from for educating my kids or, um, or for my hobbies, for the music I like and things like that um, to connect with people. But as far as my personal, what, what I post, um, I'm posting family stuff there because Facebook has the option for me to put friends only and even to restrict uh, my posts even further than that, so I can control who sees my what I what pictures I put on there, as opposed to um, Twitter or Instagram, where I would either have to restrict my whole account from anybody looking at it, or post my kids' baby pictures to the entire world, which I think they might not appreciate. Um, my family wouldn't appreciate. Um, but on Facebook, I can post pictures and restrict who, who can access those. So, um, but still, the pictures will be kind of out there for in the news feed for, um, for friends and family who might randomly come across them and see how I'm doing. Um, and, you know, people who I would normally want to catch up with and look in, uh, and send them an email with that kind of thing. Um, so, anyway, back to uh, the, the main topic here. Sorry, I got to crack a little bit again. Um, so, um, some of the articles are saying that the reason that um, Line is more popular in Japan than things like Facebook and Twitter is because um, privacy is um, more valued in Japanese culture than it is in American culture, um, which again, I think that's just going to vary from person to person, but um, overall, um, yeah, it could, could be. Um, but then that makes me ask, why is YouTube very high then if, um, if privacy um, if, if privacy is a big concern, if someone's, oh, I thought I saw something <laughs> jump across the corner there. <laughs> anyway, um, if privacy is, um, it's nighttime, so I'm smoking myself out. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, and I'm in the basement. So, um, 
if privacy is a big concern, then why YouTube where someone, you know, you, you, I think you've got to have some courage to put yourself out there on video, right? That could make people pretty, you know, that, that could make the YouTube poster pretty nervous. I'm kind of nervous. So, um, anyway, um, I looked into that as well. And, um, obviously a lot of these numbers are coming from people who are viewing. Um, but they said one reason that a lot of people in Japan are posting on YouTube is, um, because the prevalence of hobbies, um, of, of people having hobbies that they are really, really into, uh, in Japan, which again, you know, in America, we see that plenty of times too. I mean, I have hobbies I'm really into. Um, I know plenty of people who have favorite hobbies. Um, uh, definitely you know, posting, you know, yeah. Um, posting stuff about your favorite hobby is really awesome. And they, um, you're getting a lot of people who are connecting with, um, you know, they're finding a niche there. They're posting about their favorite hobby and other people are coming and, um, and want to just watch their videos about that hobby. So that's really great. And, um, yeah, we definitely see that in America too. We get people posting, um, posting how to make, um, greeting cards or handmade, um, or making up cooking videos or all kinds of things. Um, so that's really great. And, um, as for me, why do I think that more people are watching YouTube? Um, I personally think that watching YouTube, um, can be more relaxing um, and you can multitask while you're watching YouTube, um, as opposed to reading on uh, Twitter or Facebook. Um, now reading is really great. It's an awesome skill. Um, and humans came up with reading and writing so that we could communicate and our ability to communicate the world around us and the thoughts that are in our heads, um, have been developing more and more, and now we can communicate with the picture and the sound, you know, with the image and the sound, just like as if we were in the same room together. So, um, why sit there and read it when I can just watch it and do something else at the same time, like fold laundry or wash dishes or whatever, or um, write write something else down that I'm trying to work on. Um, so I think it's, it's a little more natural in that way. Um, I think it's also a little, could be more relaxing because there's not the feeling of responsibility quite so much, um, which, um, one of the great things about you, or sorry, one of the great things about Facebook and Twitter is that we can catch up with all our friends and see what's going on in their lives. But then that, along with that comes um, a feeling of responsibility too, of uh, needing to um, keep up with everyone's activities. And you're, you're, um, you're getting a lot of information um, all at once. Um, even reading a novel or something like that, it's kind of like, um, a long, um, a, a, how do I say, uh, when you read a novel or something, it's, it's all kind of connected. It's all one story. Um, it's all, you know, uh, put together. Uh, same thing with the video on YouTube. It's, it's kind of for five or 10 or 20 or 30 sorry, this was so long, um, minutes, you're going to be kind of on the same subject, or at least in the same context. Uh, whereas going through Facebook or Twitter, um, you're bouncing between snippets of different people's lives, um, one after the other, shifting, shifting. Um, that can be um, kind of mentally overwhelming, I think. 
And I think it's one of those things that we're doing to ourselves right now and we don't really realize it. We just we just think, oh, this is this is great. I'm keeping up with everybody all at once. And it is great, but it's um, kind of like a, you're thirsty and you're getting the fire hose, you know? <laughs> like, it's, it's great, but um, not, not always so relaxing as we think it is. A lot of times we think we're going to just relax and go through our Facebook and we get done and we're even more exhausted. Um, it, it, sometimes it just feels like work. And in my opinion, watching something on YouTube usually doesn't feel like work. It just feels like background or uh, fun. So, um, I also read that um, YouTube is a great way to get music out there uh, in Japan, so that's really, um, really encouraging. I hope that, out, that my favorite bands will keep getting more and more popular around the world. Um, so, Ayame mentions in his blog also about Nico Nico, which for overseas fans is not going to be very super pertinent. Um, Nico Nico is um, another uh, video service in Japan, which um, mostly has a lot of paid features, and it has done really well with the paid channels and features. Um, when I first encountered it, I really thought it was more like a TV station, um, but apparently you can post your own stuff on there too. Um, but nowadays, um, it's definitely getting outshined by YouTube. Um, as for overseas fans, we can become premium members of Nico Nico, but we can't subscribe to most of the channels yet. Um, most of the channels won't accept overseas credit cards. So that can be really, um, really difficult uh, for, for people overseas who are trying to get it get into Nico Nico. Um, but, um, so I think that was the next section of his blog was uh, what will happen in the future. So, um, well, he mentions that, you know, we, we don't know what might come next, especially with people who've been growing up with a tablet close at hand all their lives. You know, I'm uh, 34 this year, and um, when I was a kid, uh, we didn't have a lot of this stuff. We did, um, my dad is actually a computer science professor, so <laughs> we did have computers and the internet as soon as they were around, but it, it, it wasn't something I used much. Um, we didn't have cell phones. We had to go use a payphone, um, or like go, you know, get and you know, find a phone somewhere in the school or something. Um, what else? I mean, if you wanted to watch a movie, a video, you had to like be at home at the time that it was on the TV. You had to rent a video. You had to record something off of the TV with a tape. Um, and putting your own, um, putting your own stuff out there, uh, was not happening the way that it is now. Um, and that's a subject I'd like to get into, um, another time, really, because I think that's a very big change for our society. Um, you know, you would have to, 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 to reach a hundred people with your words, you would have to, I don't know, go stand on the street corner with a sign, like, um, or get published, or, um, maybe become a disc jockey on the radio, or get get a gig with the local TV station, um, or get a live gig or something. Um, and that's how you can reach a bunch of people. And now, um, you just have to hit send. And it's, it's, uh, it's like a pretty big change. Anyway, so the future, um, 
I think we're probably going to continue moving towards something that's more natural, um, just as we've gone from, you know, scratching stuff out on paper to just seeing each other and hearing each other as if we're in the same room. Um, who knows what may come next? Um, and I even have like a, a, you know, it would be, um, I'd like to write a story. Some I've been thinking about writing a story sometime about a um, kind of future where raw emotion is transmitted, um, you know, using manipulation of um, sort of endorphins or um, electrical signals in the body or something like that. Um, and um, what kind of havoc might that bring to the world, but also what kind of um, connectedness. Um, but Yeah, we, um, we really don't know what will come in the future, but I think it will be exciting. And I think we have a lot to keep in mind as far as how to make it more enjoyable. Um, how, how to get technology to support our lives rather than, um, rather than distract from our lives. And, um, that's something I often mention in another blog about uh, about the wristband Disney World that they're doing a great job at having the technology fade into the background and just make your day easier and more fun. Um, so I love to see that kind of thing in the future. Uh, so this blog has gone about seven times longer than I planned, and I'm sorry. Um, if you just want to watch a couple minutes of it, or just skip it entirely, I totally understand, although you wouldn't be hearing me right now if you skipped it. So, anyway, ah, thanks for watching, and um, have a great day. I hope um, to do more shorter blogs in response to, or shorter videos in response to Iona's blog in the future. <laughs> Bye.